Brett Kyoto students. I'm just going to run you through all of the crucial airway skills. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is positioning. So this is achieving the sniffing position for your patient. Uh, that is to gain neck flexion and head extension. So neck flexion and head extension. So we're going to achieve that by uh, padding and towels or pillows or whatever is possible. So you're going to pop something underneath the shoulders to start with. And then you're going to assess whether you've got your ear in line with your sternal notch or not. And that would be the corner of the ear. So then you might also need to pop some items under the head. So we've got some nice neck flexion. And then we can add some head extension and we have a nice alignment between the ear and the sternal notch. So that's your first point of call for airway management is achieving the sniffing position. Now remember, it's slightly different for obese patients and pediatrics. Uh, pediatrics, if this was your small patient, you would have the shoulder roll and just one towel here. Uh, and you would have the head in neutral position because head extension may occlude your trachea. Okay, uh, obese people, you will need extra ramping and padding to get the shoulders up to make it easier to get the air in line with the sternal notch. Great, okay, so that's point number one, the sniffing position. Head, ex head sorry, neck flexion, head extension. Uh, your two airway maneuvers, your head tilt, chin lift, that's maneuver number one, is as simple as pushing the head back and lifting the chin up. It doesn't matter whether the mouth is open or closed. Okay, so that's pushing the head back and lifting the chin up. Head tilt, chin lift. Jaw thrust is moving the lower mandible up, so you want to push those bottom teeth up in front of the top teeth. So finding that the angle of the mandible, so the bony bit, you're going to push the bottom teeth up and hold that there. This airway maneuver is only effective while you stand in this position. Okay, It can be very tiring, especially if you've got larger patients. So just again, angle of the mandible, jaw thrust. All right, you can do it like this if the head is heavy enough to sort of counteract the force required to hold the, the bottom jaw up. Your airway adjuncts, uh, your nasal airway is sized by your patient's height regardless of their gender. So average height will take a size 6 nasopharyngeal airway and a taller height will take a size 7. Uh, this is the bevel. This is really important for orientation of insertion. If your nasal airway comes with a safety pin in the packet, that needs to be put through the airway before inserting it into the patient. That's to prevent it from becoming a foreign body. Identify the largest nostril. Apply plenty of lubricant to the airway. Insert it into the near bevel facing the septum. So that doesn't matter which side you're inserting it, the bevel must face the septum, okay? Uh, insert it through the nose and aim directly backwards. Okay, don't follow the line of the nose or you'll end up near the brain tissue. If you have difficulties, uh, rotation can help spread the lubricant as you're sliding the airway in, or it may require a change of nostril to the other side. Okay, remember aim directly backwards. Fantastic. Okay, so the next airway adjunct is your oral airway or your gadel. This is sized from the angle of the mandible to the maxillary incisors. So angle of the mandible to the maxillary incisors. It doesn't matter whether you lie it side on, back to front, upside down. The point is angle of the mandible to the maxillary incisors. Uh, provide a bit of head tilt. Open the mouth. You want the tip of the airway facing kephalad towards the head. Insert it until you meet some resistance, rotate it 180 degrees and slide it in. You want the flange to sit against the teeth but below the lips just to hold it in place. All right, uh, if you have difficulty inserting it that way, it may be just opening the mouth and sliding it in will achieve uh, a good placement. Remember to seal the flange with the, the lips. Uh, in children, it is important to use a tongue depressor and you 
only ever insert it concave down in pediatric patients, okay? Cool, so that was head tilt, chin lift, jaw thrust, insertion of a nasal and an oral airway. So anytime you're using a bag valve mask or the breathing circuit of the anesthetic machine, um, you may want to have an airway adjunct in place. Using the C and E grip, you're going to put the C around the mask and the E or the three fingers are going to go along the mandible, not on the soft tissue, always on the bone. What you want to do is place the mask on the nose and then seal it around the bottom of the chin. A little bit of head tilt, chin lift. Lifting the face into the mask, not pushing the mask down. Um, you want to make sure your bag valve mask is attached to an oxygen source and it is turned on. And you're just going to squeeze the bag enough to make the chest go up and down. Slow, gentle breaths every six to ten seconds. Great.